as I looked around at the people in my industry and the ones that were on the same level, I saw how hard they were working to stay there. Yeah. And trying to push everybody else down so that they held that top dog position, yeah. and that didn't look attractive to me. Uh, from rags to where, you know, the pinnacle of your success. Because he's hung out with a ton of like famous people and all that, so I know you guys are all dying to hear the backstory and then say the burnout yeah. aspect of it. And then what we had, you know, over dinner last night, what we talked about is like the new reinvention of, of you, which is really, really exciting. And that's the new business paradigm, by the way, that we're going to be talking about. So, brags <laughs> <laughs> to well, Richard. as I alluded to earlier, growing <clears throat> up in, a, in, a, in, a, in an, an environment where you had nothing, mm -hmm. that meant that you could, basically, you could have anything that you wanted if you set your mind to it. Problem with that is, as I said before, is that my role models were based upon television and, um, and magazines, not on any, any sort of uh, schooling or intellectual capabilities. It was about, how do I get famous? Because if I get famous, they're going to love me. Yeah. That's what I thought in my head, right? Yeah. So I went on the journey. I tried, I found ways to uh, take me on the journey. And the first step that I took was I started modeling. Well, that was great because what did that do? That was a photograph. It could be in a magazine. And I could take that home and I could show that to everybody. And that was successful, okay. right? I can see that. In the process of that, I was very fortunate to meet some great mentors along the way. Mm -hmm. um, there's one mentor in particular is in, by the name of Fred Siegel in Southern California who took me under his wing and taught me, thank goodness, I was wise enough to, uh, to uh, let him open those doors for me. Yeah. Um, taught me about business, about uh, retail business, and, and a winter from Vogue magazine who um, taught me if you wanted to be the best, if you wanted to sell to the best stores, if you wanted to dress the best celebrity, if you wanted to be on the cover of a magazine, that it was actually the easiest thing in the world to do. Really? Mm. Yeah, and this was a fascinating learning experience. And the reason that she said this was because she said to me that I had done it to her already. She said, do you know how many people pick up the phone and call me? I said, nobody calls me. She goes, they'll call my assistant, but she said, you didn't. You called and you said, I want to speak to Anna Winter at Vogue magazine, and that's why I picked up the phone. Nice. And therefore, what happens is that you become a very small percentage of the world that actually has the balls or the guts or whatever to pick up the phone and call that person who's in charge. Absolutely. Right? <clears throat> so the success that comes along with that, and I learned how to get whatever I wanted by being, not aggressive, I don't want to say aggressive, but by being very clear about what I wanted. Assertive. Assertive, yes, very yeah, assertive. Absolutely. Well, with that, you start to get a reputation. Uh, and your reputation is not, a, it's an, it, this is not a bad reputation to have, but you start to, you're treated differently in the world. You're, you're treated very differently. And in, in many regards, I became a, a celebrity myself. Well, you know, I think you start to, really enjoy it because it's like gosh all that attention all that attention is on me everybody's looking at me mm -hmm. but we were also talking about those individuals who have you know start to have personality issues or psychological issues right? acting out uh, acting out yes you know you you took drugs yeah we were talking about the i don't want to name names uh, but what's her name another celebrity <laughs> another celebrity shoplifting right you know those kind of things it's like, well, why would you do that? You have all the money in the world. You, you know, you could buy anything that you need to, but why would you want to shoplift? Why would you want to create trouble for yourself? Why would you want to so-called destroy your identity? And, you know, and, and Anthony, we were talking about that. It's like, well, you have that attention, but then within all that attention, you s exclude yourself because nobody can reach you. Right. Because you're, you, you know, you're in a different, say, layer so to speak and so you have all these people around you and it's like being in a whole different world yeah. and you can't really connect you know what you and know? nobody can get to you this is what's really interesting you get to a place where nobody can get to you right yeah. it takes I, that's why I would always again from Anna Winter I learned I would always take the call from somebody who had the courage to call and ask for me 
Yeah, right? that's so cool. And th- because what happens is that you have everybody protecting you from the world. So what happens is your world becomes a bubble of fantasy almost because you're not in touch with what's what's really going on out there. So the downfall, the downfall is that you stop being responsible. Mm -hmm. You stop doing the things that you're supposed to be doing. The fall from, I don't want to say the fall from grace because I can't really say it was that in the public eye. Yeah, it wasn't in the but it was the personal fall from grace. Oh, and that thing about what do you people do? They start to act out. And that acting out is not because they want to shoplift or do a bunch of drugs. You got to remember that they've built, a world has been built around them and they're looking for somebody to break it. Yeah. To come in and go, wake up. Absolutely. And and you keep putting it out there, hoping that somebody has enough strength to come in because you don't have enough strength to do it yourself. Right. So you commit crimes, you do shoplifting, you do drugs. Get in just, car wrecks. You do, just you get in car wrecks. Drive Absolutely. drunk, you whatever. You beat up your spouse. Right. You, whatever it is, it's like, please make me look like that bad guy, whatever. So it's like... I can fall back down from that facade of grace, and, you know? and I want to be come back into, say, the masses, literally, because that's where they start to feel alive again. But that doesn't work either, right? By the way, <laughs> it doesn't work. Either. So it doesn't where work. do you go? So again, the key is it's not what you're doing, how you're doing it, guys. It's your inner expansion. But today I do jewelry because I want to celebrate the gemstones. Um, I want to celebrate the um, the the life that the is life within, gemstone. within the Absolutely. gemstones because I also want to give them an opportunity to transcend. And I s- share this a lot. A lot of times I buy gemstones and I don't use them. Um, and I can feel a gemstone and it makes me emotional almost because it can be very intense Um, a lot of times I buy gemstones not to use them because I know that they've been so traumatized that they need to rest and they'll tell me when they're ready that's cool and that's where I am today today the jewelry for me is about the flow absolutely there's a flow of energy that's coming in and out of the piece of jewelry. I just happen to be a medium or a catalyst to be able to take that raw material or that stone that was dug out of the earth and traumatized, give it a new interpretation yeah, and a new life moving yeah. forward. So, yeah, so as we kind of come to a close, and this is, you know, we're talking obviously about jewelry, but this is any business paradigm, guys. The new business paradigm is not, you know, what's in what's in the goods, what's in the material. Obviously, that's important. You know, you need to have high level, um, you know, pieces of jewelry or equipment that works. Whatever. It's not about that. It's the consciousness that you make or you live in as you create that piece of jewelry. So not only are say the gemstones in say a perfect condition, but the person who makes it is in that higher level of consciousness. And then, what you, what's even cooler about that, especially for creative people, whether you're a musician, you know, whether you're an artist, you know, theater, or you know, creating gems, or you know, creating that next new computer chip, whatever it might be, it doesn't really matter. You know, when, you, when you create from a higher level of consciousness and bring it down here, it not only destroys, say, the consumer, like you know the cell phones and you know 5G and all that stuff it destroys the person who created it so the new business paradigm and that's what you know Anthony and I are working on basically is what what we do is like shit we expand into that consciousness where that creativity or that next best thing that great great invention that's going to change the world come into and we stay at that level so the the, the properties or the environment for that great item or that great idea 
thrives for it. So it doesn't die on the vine and it doesn't destroy the people here, which is really exciting. So think about that. Uh, I know we're running out of time. Uh, we're going to do more segments on the new business paradigm, uh, how to access it, how, how you can come into it, how you can come into, say, the higher level ideas and stay there without destroying uh, yourself, uh, the economy, society, the earth. My name is Masajati. This has been Anthony Camargo for uh, the XI podcast. Peace.